Welcome back. All right, so Barry and Gabrick uh, retired this year, and so I want to do a video on his career, and it's a fascinating career. It's a long career. Uh, a lot of stuff went down with Marion Gabrick, who was the original face of the Minnesota Wild. You could argue he is still the best, most talented player that has ever worn a Minnesota Wild jersey. You could make that argument. Um, was he the most consistent? No. Was he the one who missed the least games with injury? That's clearly a no. But was he exciting? Absolutely. He was electrifying right from the beginning. So he's number three pick in 2000. And in the expansion year of 2000-2001, he played well. 71 games, 18 goals, 18 assists, 36 points. So a Minnesota team that was goal challenged, he had 18. That was pretty good for a kid, uh, brand new to the league, out of Slovakia. He was 7th in Calder voting. Uh, and that was the first year of a 3-year entry-level contract that would pay him $1.075 million per season. Proving that the rookies these days do not make more money than they did 20 years ago. Um, and that's, of course, something that we could discuss another time. But, yeah, uh, that was something that they agreed to when they ended up getting a salary cap. To quote Jeremy Roenick, I made my money. Uh, 2000, just the idea that they knew they were hosing over the new kids coming in when they signed that, that salary cap CBA. 2001-2002, 78 games played, 30 goals, 37 assists, 67 points. So this is the first 30-goal season for him. And again, he is, bar none, the best player on the Minnesota Wild. You know, a pretty sweet jersey they had at that point, too. Wouldn't mind seeing this come back. Just throwing that out there. 2002-2003, he plays 81 games, 30 goals, 35 assists, 65 points. And in the playoffs, magic. 18 games, 9 goals, 8 assists, 17 points. Uh, he also played in the All-Star game that year. And of course, that was a year that Minnesota goes all the way to the conference final. So it was seen that under Jacques Lemaire, maybe the sky's the limit. And the fact he's getting 30 goals under Jacques Lemaire tells you, pretty good scorer. And he was a big key part of that comeback series win against the Vancouver Canucks. Canucks had him down three games to one. They came back and won three in a row. And Gabrick scared the heck out of me every time he was on the ice. So 2003-2004... Uh, he misses some games he held out before signing. He signs on October 31st. So this is the first sign that contracts could become a problem between the Minnesota Wild and Marion Gabrick. He ends up agreeing to a contract that becomes two years. It's originally signed as three years, but because of the year that's wiped out due to the lockout, he only has the two-year signing there. Uh, $5.579 million in total. So that season he plays 65 games, 18 goals, 22 assists, 40 points. He plays the same number of games the following season, which is 05-06, because he suffers a groin injury. 65 games that year, 38 goals, 28 assists, 66 points. So when he plays, he's fantastic. And he might have had a 50-goal season if he'd played all 82 games. And again, that's just a, well, maybe, because at 17 more games, he would have needed 12 goals. It's possible he could have got there. We will never know. 2006-2007. Uh, uh, July 5th, he signed a three-year extension worth $6.33 million per season with the Minnesota Wild. So he's not signing long-term. Uh, he ends up only playing 48 games that year because he re-injured the groin injury that he had the year before. He was only supposed to miss a couple of weeks. He missed more time than that. He ends up playing 48 games. But again, when he's in the lineup, he's very good. 30 goals, 27 assists, 57 points. 2007-2008, one of his best seasons, 77 games, 42 goals, which was 7th in the NHL that year, 41 assists for 83 points. In 6 playoff games, 1 assist. The previous year in 5 playoff games, he had 3 goals and an assist. So, uh, and on the 20th of December that year, he became the first member of the Minnesota Wild to have around 5 goals. He had 5 goals and 1 assist in a game against the New York Rangers. So overall, it was a very good season for him. And so this is where the intrigue starts. There were rumors about contracts he was rejecting. So one rumor that was out there was a 10-year contract for $80 million. There was a rumor of an 8-year contract worth $80 million. There were rumors of 10-year contracts worth $7.5 million each. Contract offers that his agent, and then the agent that replaced that agent, Ron Salser, because um, he had Alan Walsh at first, and then Ron Salser takes over. And in both cases, the agents were saying, I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, Salser said, we haven't even had conversations in weeks. So all these reports out there of all this money that he's turning down from Minnesota. We haven't even talked to them. So Minnesota desperately wants Gabrick to stay. He has been the face of the franchise. The thing is, he had hip surgery that year that shortened his season. So even if 
they had wanted to maybe trade him and see what they could do for a rental at the at the deadline. Him missing so many games took his value as a rental and dropped it. He ends up playing 17 games. To his credit, in those 17 games, he's still above a point a game. 13 goals, 10 assists for 23 points. So after all the rumors of whether or not he's going to sign in Minnesota, then the rumors change after the season's done. He's coming to Vancouver. He's coming. He has bought a house in West Van. I remember. Vancouver fans remember well. He bought a house in West Vancouver. He's coming to Vancouver. And then July 1st, he signed with the Rangers. Uh, he signs with the Rangers five years. The cap hit was $7.5 million. And looking back at it, it might have been best for the Canucks that they didn't sign that contract, if that's what it was. Uh, 76 games played that first season in New York. And what a start. 42 goals, which was fifth in the NHL that year. 44 assists and 86 points. The only season he finishes top 10 in points in the NHL, he was 10th that season. So, yeah, he buys a house in West Van, was the rumor, and then he went to New York. Because what's better for a commute than having a house in Vancouver and playing in New York? I think that's very practical. It's a good idea. You might want to buy yourself a plane. 2010-2011, uh, he only played 62 games that year. He had a shoulder injury uh, with an illegal check into the boards. So he's gone through a groin injury, hip surgery, and now it's a shoulder. And this is where the idea of an injury-prone player comes from. It's not one nagging injury, it's different injuries. Because I know there's videos where I'll talk about a guy who got hurt, and I say, man, he's starting to look injury-prone. And fans will get upset. They'll say, not injury-prone, it's just, it's an accident. Yeah. And that's that's sadly how some careers end up being shortened. Uh, he plays 62 games that year, 22 goals, 26 assists, 48 points. Inconsistent production from him. Five games in the playoffs, one goal, one assist, two points. But he recovers in 2011-2012. Fantastic comeback story. 82 games, 41 goals, which was third in the NHL that year, 35 assists, 76 points. And in the playoffs, as the Rangers go on a nice long run, he's a big part of it. 20 games, 5 goals, 6 assists, 11 points. So he's a second-team All-Star, plays in the All-Star game, and he was the MVP of the All-Star game as well. Things are looking up. Things look really good for him. So what happens the following season? He doesn't play very much due to injury. And when he does play... The results are inconsistent. He plays 35 games for the Rangers in 2012-2013. Actually, that year he didn't. He only missed the one game with injury. So I'm, I'm missing my years here. This was a lockout shortened season. So 35 games, 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. And so they opt to trade him. They opt to trade him to Columbus. He's traded with Blake Parlett, Stephen Delisle for a 2014 sixth round pick, Derek Broussard, Derek Dorsett, and... John Moore. Remember, they took Derek Broussard and turned him into Mika Zibanejad. So there's a trade tree for you. Starts with Gabrick. So, yeah, this was a trade that worked out okay for Columbus in the beginning. Uh, he had a good start for Columbus. He got a goal in that first game. He played 12 games for Columbus. Three goals, five assists, eight points. 2012-2013, he only played, or 2013-2014, I should say, only played 22 games with Columbus. Six goals, eight assists, 14 points. And on March 15th, he has traded for a two, 2014 second, 2015 second, and Matt Fratton to the LA Kings. 2013-2014 Kings liked Gabrick a lot. 19 games, 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points. This is as a rental. And then in the Stanley Cup playoffs, as a rental, he does pretty well. 26 games, 14 goals, which led the playoffs and goals that year. 8 assists and 22 points, and a Stanley Cup. Interesting enough, when I was looking through articles to get ready for this video and put things on the board. Uh, 2008, there's an article from the Minnesota Wild, from, from uh, uh, an article I read there about the Minnesota Wild talking about how inconsistent he was in the playoffs and how it didn't necessarily justify a big price tag. Well, consistent playoffs, he gets a big price tag. He decides to stay in LA, signs a seven-year contract for a $4.875 million cap hit. There's some risk there. This is a player who gets injured regularly, and now he's in his 30s, I do believe, in 2014. Because this would have been, what, 14 years after he's drafted. So he'd have to be in his 30s, and there's some risk there. 2014-2015, play 69 games, which is high for him at this stage in his career. 27 goals, 20 assists, 47 points. Very good production when he's in the lineup. 2015-2016, uh, that starts to fall. Not only that, but his, his foot speed, which was his hallmark early in his career, starts to fall off too. Because when you're dealing with all these injuries and you're getting banged up, it's going to affect your foot speed as well. So 54 games played in 2015-2016, 12 goals, 10 assists, 22 points. In four playoff games, he records one assist for the LA Kings. 
2016-2017, still with LA. 56 games played, 10 goals, 11 assists, 21 points. Again, he can't play more than 60 games at this stage, and he's just really dealing with a lot of nagging injury problems. 2017-2018, what would become his final season? We had no idea at the time. First off, a knee injury delays his, his debut that year for the Kings. 30 games played, 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. And now his contract at $4.875 million for a cap hit is kind of cumbersome. So... That cumbersome contract is traded for one that is cumbersome as well. He's traded with Nick Shore for Dion Phaneuf and Nate Thompson. So the Ottawa Senators want the Phaneuf contract gone. They take on the Gabbert contract to make it gone. Uh, after going to Ottawa, he plays 16 games, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. And again, we had no idea that would be the final games he'd play in the NHL. He had herniated disc surgery. Um, after that season was done, I believe that's when he had the surgery. And they couldn't buy him out. Because he's injured. You can't buy out an injured player. Um, and he, before that, he was a healthy scratch in L.A. too. So part of the reason he only plays 30 games there is because he was a healthy scratch at times. So it, it was it was a really kind of a quiet end to a career that was kind of noisy uh, throughout, especially towards the end of his time in Minnesota and the start in New York. December 27th, 2020, he was traded to Tampa Bay with Anders Nilsson. It's part of that infamous $18 million over the cap for Tampa. But it's money that he was never going to play. It's just going in LTIR. The exchange going to Ottawa was the second round pick next year, 2022. Braden Coburn and Cedric Paquette. So uh, Tampa was using this to try to, you know, take on that long-term injured reserve money. He was never going to play. Neither was Nelson. Nelson's retired too. And so this was a way to have his contract finish out. He retired after that contract finishes in 2021 because he was not healthy enough to play. And, you know, it was November 4th when he finally retired. And so, yeah, he didn't play a game for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But again, every time people mention that $18 million over the cap, I go, yeah, but a lot of that's Gabrick and Nilsson, who didn't play a single game. So they, they weren't exactly on the ice out there tearing it up in the Stanley Cup playoffs. If there was any chance that Marion Gabrick could have been on the ice for those games, he would have been there. Um, while there may have been complaints about maybe the perception he was greedy during his time at the end of you know his run in Minnesota, maybe with the money he got from the Rangers and then from the Kings, the reality was he was also very competitive and he wanted to win. So that was important, and I think if he had had an opportunity to come out and play for the Tampa Bay Lightning and if he had felt up to doing so, I think he would have done it. And I think he could have been useful. Uh, one thing with Marion Gabrick, 14 career hat tricks, which is a lot. Uh, he was he was definitely one of the better goal scorers in his peak, as you can see with him being top 10 three times in goal scoring. Also, Marion Gabrick has his own foundation that aims to expand access to youth hockey in Slovakia. He also has his own ice rink there that he paid to have built. So uh, Marion Gabrick is, from everything I've read, a pretty good guy. Uh, I, I never heard anything about teammates not liking him necessarily, but yeah, he it always felt to me like he knew what he was worth. And I don't think he intended to stay in Minnesota. I think that's what happened there. And then, of course, he signs with the Rangers. And, you know, that happens. So I'm wearing Minnesota because that's where I thought he played some of his best hockey. I could have worn Rangers. I could have worn Kings because he had the Stanley Cup run there, too. But anyways, there you go. The career of Marion Gabrick. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.